So tonight we are pleased to have uh, Bhante Dr. G. Chandima here this evening at Pasapa Police Silver Panorama. Bhante is a Canadian. He has been living in Canada for the past 12 years. Yeah. And uh, Bhante is currently residing uh, and will be spending the Wasa at Pikfu's Buddhist Mahavimara Temple. Bhante is an associate editor of the Journal of International Buddhist Studies, which is published by the Buddhist Research Institute of Mahajulalongko Raja Vidyalaya University in Thailand. He was previously a research fellow at the Center for Studies in Religion and Society, University of Victoria, Canada. Bhante was invited to Malaysia March this year in March by YDM, Young Buddhist Association of Malaysia, for the World Buddhist Conference that discussed on the Buddhist Heritage Trail. Yeah, and currently, Bhante is back inside Malaysia, propagating the Dharma. Like, for example, Bhante just now just had an online Bali reading class, OPRC, from 6 to 7.30. So after which, now he has a talk. Tomorrow and the day after, also a hectic schedule for Bhante. So let us call, welcome, Bhante. And tonight's talk, the title of the talk is The Wonder of Being a Human. The Wonder of Being a Human. I shall pass the stage to Bhante. All right. Thank you, uh, Brother Chua for uh, the introduction and for the gracious uh, time so far. I came here yesterday, uh, I would say around 4 p.m., I think. Yes, so let's get started by paying respect to the Buddha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samma Sambuddhasse Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sambuddhasse Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sambuddhasse Good evening, everybody. I'm very happy to have in, been invited by, let's try if I correct uh, pronunciation, if I have correct pronunciation about the words. Pasatwan, Buddhist Hile Perak, Lower, Lower Perak. <laughs> All right, um, for this Dhamma talk. And uh, this Dhamma talk's topic is the wonder of being a human. So it's pretty interesting because uh, we all are humans. So uh, the importance of uh, discussing about being human and why we are humans and what will happen to us after, how to spend uh, life as a human, they all are important aspects which we do not discuss that much, right? So let me ask you, is being born as a human a wonder? <laughs> question, topic as a question to you. It is, right? It is a wonder. Compared to? Compared to other beings, including uh, many other beings. How many other beings are there, like uh, as a section of uh, the beings, so we call them beings, huh? we all are beings, animals they are beings, devas are beings, they are not humans, and petas are beings, maras are beings, humans are beings too, in addition to animals. So why is it a wonder, why? I normally ask questions in my Dhamma talk. And there is a certain uh, separate section for Q&A also at the end. But normally I ask questions just to uh, engage everybody. Why is it a wonder? I think you said 
Brother Chua said, uh, compared to animals, yes. So we enjoy, we experience uh, happiness. That is one way of looking at it. In other ways, what do you think? Why being born as a human can be a wonder? You might think that Bhante is asking us, he is going to give the talk. <laughs> he is the one who made the topic. <laughs> right? Uh, practicing Dhamma is a, is the most important aspect of being a human. And also the mind. All beings have mind, but we only have the thinking mind. Right? We all have the thinking mind. Animals have mind, they also think. But they are not very much developed in that thinking part. Thinking is also the problem, right? It is also a problem because when you think too much, we overthink. When we think too less, we are not wise beings, right? Thinking is also a problem. But basically, thinking mind, we have a thinking mind. We can think, we can uh, uh, plan, we can, uh, I would say, come up with better thoughts. We can practice Dhamma. Right? So, this is why we are basically looking at that being born as a human is a wonder. But is being born as a human, I would say, uh, similar to all other beings, all other human beings? You take all human beings here in the world, are they similarly born as good humans, physically, mentally? Not everybody. Some people are born with some difficulties. Some people are born carrying some other problems. Then there is also a problem. Right? There are reasons for all these issues. Some people are born with perfect health. But some, some humans. But some humans are born with some physical impairments, difficulties. Some people are bonely blind, some are bonely deaf, some are bonely having issues. Their whole young age, uh, early time is going to be spent with lot of difficulties. And other things are also affecting the people that they are going to associate. Sometimes there is a human being who is born as a human being, but his parents are not going to take care of that human being very well. So he or she going to have a very difficult period of time in his or her, I would say, young time, maybe child time. But other human beings, they, have a, they are well taken care of by their parents. Why is it? That is another issue. And some human beings, they die very early. Miscarriages happen even to many. They are born but they die. Some die at a very early age. That means now, more to talk about, that means even being born as a human is a wonder. Even within that birth, there are many human beings who are experiencing lot of problems. But there are some other human beings who are always happy, well taken care by others, spending a very good life. So there are a lot of things to talk about. Let's talk about why have we become humans. Let's start our conversation from that point. Why? Because we have done a massive good karma. Everybody does good karma. The animals also must have done good karma. You can see some animals are very coarse here. Yeah? They, are, they are getting uh, comforts than a human. Some animals are just going here and there on the roads. They have nothing. People attack them sometimes. No water, no food. So much miserable life. Right? So, we must have done a massive good car. That is why we became a human in this life. 
that is number one to think of it's a wonder it's a very wonderful thing what are the good karmas we may have done to become a human anybody has any idea about it in the previous life we must have practiced dhamma definitely that is why you uh, are interested in dhamma practicing dhamma anything else we do not cause suffering to ourselves and others okay that means uh, we are always looking for well being of other people kind people but maybe the other reasons why you think you were born as a human don't you think that you were a human in the past life too uh, that is number one to think about in that perspective now there is a sutta in the majjhima nikaya we call it bala pandita sutta what is it bala pandita sutta in this bala pandita sutta the buddha says for an animal to be born as a human is very rare he gives an example there is one uh, eyed blind turtle this type this turtles one of the eyes blind <clears throat> so his plan is he wants to come to the surface of the ocean once in every 100 years and then there are some of the <clears throat> i would say cultivation equipments that are going to the sea through the rivers yok so assuming that when the one eyed blind turtle comes out of the uh, surface just for a split second what is the possibility probability of that he his one good eye is going to get a hole out of the yok and he could open the eyes he could see outside of the ocean how is that probability such a very very improbable very difficult narrow escape narrow chance then the buddha says for animals it is that difficult he doesn't say they cannot it's that difficult to be born as a human then what does the buddha say indirectly for humans they have a highly they have a high chance of being born as a human on the basis of humans take care of other humans humans love other humans humans always want to be with other human that is the cause of being born as a human otherwise don't think you were randomly born as a human do not just underestimate that that uh, should be very highly understood emphasized at the beginning so for animals very difficult but there may be an animal who may have done good karmas in a previous life such good karmas can come and help that animal to be born as a human that is a different story but for many animals this is the issue so then we must have done a massive good karma now in the abhidhamma i'm not going to talk about abhidhamma a lot just to give you a specific uh, uh, point it says when you do a good karma even dana sila bhavana often times you should do with aloba adosa amo right when some people of a dana they come up with lot of their material expectations may i be reborn as this may i be reborn as a deva may i be reborn as a ma- so and so forth then what happens they will be reborn in those places but the buddha says those people cannot fully enjoy that life why is it they had too many expectations with that thing it is like banking some money yeah, into a good uh, interested amount right the buddha says you will get everything 
similar to what you offer it is complementary do we have to expect do we have to do a lot of things for complementary stuff they are complementary then the buddha says do not think about the complementary stuff merits definitely give you comforts but when you do the merit good karma make it as a kusala that means you are doing it with less greed less dosa hatred less more that means dana metta panya that's it then you are creating this massive kusalas in order for you to be reborn as a human again that is how we have to look at what may have happened to us in this life and uh, there are a lot of uh, teachings in the text it says uh, the birth of uh, the buddha is very rare and uh, birth as a human is very rare listening to dhamma the true dhamma is rare uh, so and so forth so it means obtaining a human birth is very rare so we have to look at which made us to be humans in the proper way we will talk about that uh, after certain time over here but even before that let's talk about how we should look at our human birth as we discussed earlier human mind is very important uh, for practicing dhamma now uh, if you look at uh, the different realms ah, that is a good picture i think you may have looked at that picture which has some blue boxes between yeah i think that picture shows all the realms how many realms are there according to that picture i think you may have seen it before 31 realms yeah everything 31 realms there are 31 realms that where beings are going to be reborn that means when you pass away one day you may be reborn in one of the places human place is one it doesn't mean the the earth it could be many places but it is taken as one realm so the lowest we call them hells naraka that means animals are better than them right now when devadatta monk devadatta passed away he was gone to the hell taken by the uh, hellish dogs that means he went to a realm even the animals are uh, not considered uh, to be good because animals are born in the animal kingdom the lowest is the hells naraka we call it naraka then tirachana second realm is tirachana means animals so animals are better than the narakas then the petas p e t a peta means those beings who can be ghost who can be individuals who are uh, expecting uh, good karmas for some time those are called petas actually we call petas to be the people who pass away when somebody pass away we call them as petas then when people who when people who are passing away going to be called as petas then how do we call us what is the pali term for us they are petas how about us bhutas b h long u t a bhutas we are bhutas we are still living every animal every being who are still living they are called bhutas people who passed away petas then beings who are going to be reborn how are we calling them now somebody passes away is that the end of that person's life no one life is over then another life is coming up then we call that being is 
पेत दे संभवेसी संभवेसी देन अगेन बिकम में बूत पेत संभवेसी बूत देन बूत पेत संभवेसी इट इस अ रीसाइक्लिंग प्रोसेस राइट नाउ यू कैन पिक अप व्हाट वर्ड विल आई बी कॉल वन डे आई बी अ पेता देन संभवेसी अगेन अ बूता इंटरेस्टिंग ना इट्स अ इट्स अ साइक्लिंग रीसाइक्लिंग so hills animals then petas then naraka tirachana peta asuras who are the asuras they are powerful beings right powerful little bit jealous beings they are higher than hills animals and petas after the asuras we call them humans now we are at that level we are not asuras we are not animals we are not uh, hellish beings we are humans after us heavens there are six heavens chatur maharajika yama tusita tavatinsa tusita nimmana rati parnimita vasavanti after devas six heavens brahma worlds 16 material brahma worlds then finally four immaterial brahma worlds now the thing that i wanted to talk to you is that humans have the happiness and unhappiness in a very moderate way if you go beyond the humans devas brahmas they have lots of happiness when you have too much happiness it's also going to be a problem right everybody going to be jealous each other and then uh, they have quarrel each you know over different tiny things uh, devas have the highest anger worst anger in the in the world do, do you know that some devas die because they are too much angry yes but the funny thing is that devas do not leave their bodies in the heavens they die and take the body with them <laughs> no bodies are left the like human beings we leave a body somebody has to do a funeral devas they they don't take the body but body is a very soft very subtle body there is there are no leftovers with the body in heavens but we give a, we leave our body somebody has to do something for that it is lucky if they have money to do the burial otherwise it is also going to be a problem among the family members right nowadays people pay for the insurance death insurance two men everything one package but they, for devas they don't so devas have lots of happiness so they some devas die deities die because they are too angry too much angry when some devas come to see the buddha in the jetavana ram then buddha started talking about anicca changes then some devas fainted they had fainted they never heard that their happiness is going to change one day first time they heard from the buddha they fainted interesting huh? now we know everything i mean most of them happiness will last then we might get into some unhappy things again we go back to happiness it's like a circle so we are more uh, tolerable to that change devas are not they always think their happiness is there for long actually they living for long but one day they have to exit they have to die it's a problem right it is going to be a problem on the other hand all the i would say uh, hellish beings asuras uh, petas animals and uh, the naraka hellish beings they have extreme amount of suffering dukkha so that is why being born as a human has the moderation of the both happiness and the unhappiness so this is the best place for us to practice the dhamma can a deva easily practice dhamma how are they going to practice dhamma they have lots of happiness are they seeing any unhappy things in their world not necessarily not uh, that much 
they always see happiness they always see how people enjoy life right even the brahma worlds so human space is the best place to uh, see the world as it is now we can combine the reality devas cannot see the world as it is people who are suffering cannot see the world as it is but we are able to see the world as it is if we try our best so fundamentally being born as a human is such a privilege for us to now when you say you can practice dhamma but what is the practice of dhamma being able to have a thinking mind so that you are able to see what is happening within me within you within others beyond everywhere that is such a fortunate thing not is not just a lucky fortunate thing the massive happiness that we have got now we are humans now somebody might ask how to become a human again good question is it a good question do you want to be a human again or do you want to end your life being as a sotapanna or arham in this life what do you want to be who do you want to be of course we would like to become a sotapanna at least at least what if we are not going to be sotapanna what will be the choice at that point ha huh? even at that point we should be happy because we die with an understanding that i should have been a sotapanna but it didn't work but it will work one day right that is how we have to look at it let's say we die one day but it's okay we die without being sotapanna or arahant but we we know that that should be where we should end up at least some people most people don't know what are they right yeah please take a seat yes so then now uh, i told you before we need to be surrounded by humans is it easy to be surrounded with humans or animals what is very easy for you to be with a uh, being with an is being with an animal easier than being with a human what is easier for many especially when people get to they like to be with an animal la huh? pet why is it they show loyalty to anything whatever they do they show they wag the tail and they show unconditional love to them yes that means animals can feel the uh, animal lovers they can feel because we are kind compassionate they can trace you huh? but it is not what we are talking here is it easy for a human to be with an animal or with a human being it is easy to be with a, an animal like a pet because they don't talk they don't talk they show you the loyalty right they are easy going ones but the buddha says being with the human is more important it doesn't mean that we have to chase animal we take care of them in the best possible way we give food but our company should happen with humans why is it if any thought of an animal comes to you when you die what will happen to you you have a high chance of being born in the same animal kingdom then the buddha says if thoughts like you love somebody you took care of somebody you are grateful to somebody uh, you are kind to somebody come to your mind at the time of death you are guaranteed to be born as a human this is a interesting point i tell this to many some people even say bante i cannot come to the temple i have to walk my dog i have to do this and that now the, uh, the pet has made the person busy yeah? pet has made the person not to focus on the dam not to focus on the freedom and after certain time 
this gentleman might say mante you know what he talks to me now they talk to me because when you looking at a pet for long in a certain way you feel that you don't want to talk to human beings you think you talk to them actually they are not talking to you they are looking at you but you think they are talking to you and they are, they are smiling with me because you are creating a different layer they might smile they might talk but for you you should be having good company with humans because when you are with humans it is challenging you have to be a good person maybe you have to be a tough person also because the other people are not always good to you so you have to get ready you have to be uh, tolerating those persons virtues then you can become a better person you can help that human being helping a human being creates lots of good karmas especially you will even think about such good karmas at the time of your death this is a very important point once somebody asked buddha bante you see that man is behaving like a dog kukkura vata vata kukkura vat kukkura means dog what do you think bante what will happen to that man after the death this is a sutta kukkura vati a sutta in the majjhima nikaya then the buddha said it is very clear <laughs> it is very clear what is going to happen to that man because he acted like a dog he will become a dog there's no point what he knows is only what the dog because he is imitating the dogs he thought by imitating like a dog he can liberate himself it is very clear what is going to happen to that man because he acted like a dog he will become a dog there's no point what he knows is only what the dog because he is imitating the dogs he thought by imitating like a dog he can liberate himself then same man so another man acting like a cow eat like a cow behave like a cow ruminating and then uh, sleeping like a cow then he asks what will happen to that man who acts like a, who is behaving like a cow same thing same thing will become a cow because his thoughts are like cows he behave like a cow his often times thoughts they were like cows then what is the indirect idea here if you behave like a human if you act if you respond to humans if you talk to humans if you helping humans if you basically dealing with human you have a high chance of being born as a human this is what i am trying to say so it's a wonder i think you must have done that none of you might must might not have done uh, those things kukkura vata i know that so do not misunderstand this does not mean you should not take care of the animals you should we should as much as we could but we should know our boundary what we should do we give, we may give food to them we may spend money over them but in our spiritual practice we should not make them as a problem because spiritual practice your thinking is the most important thing your thinking mind if you feed your thinking mind thoughts about uh, apaya being then those thoughts will not advance you to think about the rest right that is very important uh, now let's talk about let's say now you are a human already human now what are you supposed to do you are supposed to do 10 kusala this is the practice you should do till you die with other humans 10 kusalas but before that what you should do before you practicing 10 kusala what 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 can be your seal in the first place what is your seal 5 percent 5 percent what are the 5 percent let me ask somebody what are they in english your seal not killing not taking what's not given 
not sexual misconduct not lying huh? yeah fifth one fifth precept uh, in not taking any food or beverage that can intoxicate the mind so that you cannot decide proper right so these are the basic things that we should do then but just by practicing five precepts will not make you a good very good person you will become a good person but you will not become a better person in order for you to become a better person you should practice 10 kusala because in other religions also they don't do those five as a hindu as a christian they also don't do such then 10 kusala the buddha says dasa kusala kamma patra that means we are supposed to do 10 kusalas as much as you could number one let me tell you let me divide them into three parts body speech mind there are things you need to do for the body for the speech for the mind first let us find out what is more important is it what we do by the body or is it what we do by the speech is it what we do by the mind what are more important what are more serious stuff by the mind then speech because you you create words through the mind and then those words will become inter actions right mind speech body this is how we have to look at it let us start from the mind how many kusalas good things we should do by the mind number one what are they now i am i am talking these things because these are the things that will help you to become a human again i want you to enjoy the wonder again <laughs> in other life till you attain nibbana sotapan what is the first kusala thing that you should do by mind are uh, not greedy of course it's very difficult huh? we, we become greedy time to time it is said abhijja abhijja means not being covetous extreme greed extreme greed some people are even greedy for what other people have they have no authority other people have the stuff but they are greedy about it that means not being covetous covetousness extreme greed right buddha always asks us to give up let go as much as we could it does not mean we are gonna give up everything now because you have to live you have to have some comforts but one day you should have a mind i am going to give away everything if you have children you have to give away first give away to them huh? and then to other people one day you should make up your mind now one day if i cannot do now what one day i am going to give away my mind i am making my mind up to that level so no abhijja not abhijja abhijja a b h second what is the second kusala that you could do by mind uh, non ill will that means ill will mean vyapa that means not having thoughts of destroying other beings thoughts now panadipata is you go and kill even a thought of destroying other people i don't like that person i am going to write something online to destroy that person's reputation to destroy that person's family i am going to spread a gossip a lie to somebody to break that family all are ill will stuff character assassination is a part of ill will never ever do that we may come up with such thoughts because our, we are humans right because we are humans those will come to us but you know that you should not let them grow you are going to let them go not grow let them go I know they are bad that means no ill will second 
kusala that you do with your mind, by your mind. Third, uh, no michaditya, no michaditi. What is michaditi? Wrong view, no wrong view. What is wrong view? Wrong view means we don't have our views about morality. We have views about different akusalas. Our, our thinking, our perspective, our way of looking at things, they are corrupted with bad things, akusalas. I will tell you something. The Buddha said in one place, Micha Ditti is the worst akusala. Wrong view is the worst akusala. Why is it? If you have Micha Ditti, you might think killing is okay. What's the problem? It's okay. You think it is okay. Micha Ditti. Stealing is okay. It's okay. What's the problem? Not even that. They tell other people, steal it. It's okay. Sexual misconduct is okay. Lying is okay. What, what's the problem? Like some people make uh, on April 1st, white lies. Just as that they are very truthful people and you are going to say bunch of lies on April 1st. <laughs> then Surame, it's okay to drink and then uh, drive. What's the problem? I could manage. Where does this come from? Where does this Panatipata come from? Where does this Adinadana come from? Where does this Kamisumichachara come from? Where does this Musavada Sura may come from? A well badly rooted understanding, Michaditi. If you have Michaditi, you do all the bad things. Then the Buddha said, fix your view first before doing anything. What is it called? Samaditi. Noble Eightfold Path. First factor, Samaditi. That is where we should start. If you start your Dhamma practice with meditation, if you start with your Dhamma practice with Sila, if you start with your Dhamma practice with other small, small virtues, maybe if you start your practice, Dhamma practice with Dana, you are going to suffer a lot. Why is it? You should start your Dhamma practice with Samadhi. Why do I offer Dana? For what? Why do I do it? That is why a lot of people don't know this. They just pick one virtue, they do. Pick one virtue, they do. But they don't know all the good things should have been started with Samaditi. Why is it? Samaditi tells you why you want to do it, why you should do this. That why factor is with Samaditi. So never ever meditate without Samaditi. Never ever practice dana without Samaditi. Samaditi is the starting point. That is why the Buddha said the worst akusala is the michaditi. Now, if you don't have extreme covetousness, greed, greed, if you don't have thoughts of destroying other people physically, mentally, emotionally, some people kill uh, other people emotionally, talking bad words, they, they, they use swear words, they hurt other people every day, they bully other people. Is what you call uh, ill will. So destroying can happen in many ways, not even just go and kill somebody. Right? Sometimes with very bad words, hurtful words, you can kill somebody's life. So it's going to be a wound, like a lifelong wound, sansaric wound. Right? So now we understand there are three kusalas you should do by mind not being excessively greedy, no extreme greed, no ill will to destroy other beings, no mikchadit, samadit. Now let us go to the second layer. What is the second layer of being a good person? Speech. Is speech very important? Why Buddha said that there are four bad things people do by speech? compared to three to the mind, three to the body. Why people do four bad things with the speech? That means lot of humans in this world, they make akusalas with speech. Right? 
that is why there are four bad things so we have to avoid these four bad things what are they not lying not talking behind the back i would say not dividing people in that speech not uh, using hurtful words and not using frivolous talk let's talk each one musawada the buddha says if you want to be a human again then now speech has to be fixed in the second space musawada how to how not to lie can we always talk the truth let's talk in practical way can we always talk the truth no why is it why what is the reason why we cannot that means you are lying huh? <laughs> on the other hand <laughs> right why we can't talk the truth all the time speak the truth ah uh, so you have a greater good idea right <laughs> greater good idea i means other person may be hurt let's say oh am i handsome am i pretty oh yeah 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 you are <laughs> so you don't want to offend that person <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we don't want to offend other people. Sometimes when you go for a restaurant, these people are asking, "Ah, oh, good, good, ah? Huh? <laughs> yes, yes." <laughs> so returning or not is our choice, but say good, good, right? The food. You don't want to offend anybody. Say it's very bad food, you know, bad smell and not cooked properly. We never say that. it is up to us and we decide that in the next trip whether to go there or not so they are kind of different level of not speaking the truth maybe we are not lying but we are not saying the truth i think we are not lying at that place because lying means that you want to you want to put that person in a difficulty like cheating like cheating let's say uh, a couple says to each other that uh, i love you and you love me but they are not loving they are having some other connections that could be a cheating that could be a lie but uh, uh, you may sometimes tell something that is not true just because you don't want to offend that person so i am not saying it's okay because we can find other ways to look at it but it has you are, your intention is good right your intention is good you don't want to say something that is really harmful uh, i would say unhappy about that one you want to say anything yes yes there are a lot of things that we do because we don't want to hurt other people but uh, lying in today's world has been a very different has taken to a, gone to a different level people cheat others saying that uh, this is very natural product this is a natural product they are ayurvedic we found it from himalayas huh? and then uh, organic they are not organic they process in the same place put a different label sometimes sometimes some people may do it properly so that is cheating that is lying so you cheat other people they buy they spend money and finally you cheat them you you take their money so that's a very bad karma so i think that kind of lying is what we have to look at we should never lie to other people to cheat that person on different money issues other issues yeah scamming yeah into this world uh, scamming it's a big issue now right especially the seniors are being attacked by the scammers being very friendly you know that kind of stuff there is another uh, area to discuss about lying that means uh, let's say one uh, unrealistic example this is not this may be real too one person is trying to ch- uh, trying to run away from an attacker someone is going to attack somebody so this person is running very fast and knocks a door on the way say can you let me in because somebody is going to hurt me do something bad so he said yes yes come on in i want to save you 
and you can go under that bed and now the attacker suspects the house and he also knocks the house and he's asking was somebody like this uh, you know uh, admitted into your house yes i never say a lie i'm truthful he came in so i have to tell you the truth he's under the bed so i'm safe now right is that a good thing to do how should we behave number one is we have to make sure safety of every being at that point we may say something not true because that lie uh, that the, the the saving that human being or other being is better than telling that lie at that point that means this speaking uh like untrue thing has to be understood by context case by case our main thing is to protect human being but we are not going to defend protect bad people we are not defend protect uh, people who do akusalas but at that point we have to first save the human being but later on we have to say i lied to you because i wanted to save that human being. that is what we do as a response but at that point we may have to lie because that if you say that he will go and kill that person are we going to let that happen no we should not that means speaking the truth has to be understood from a very broader very bigger perspective not just ah uh, this is not true so we cannot say so never ever cheat misguide other people but we have to protect every being's life that is our main understanding to do that is now you understand not lying has to understand that way but on the other hand we should be very honest all the time so everybody respects trust us in addition to those very special situation second pisuna vacha means not dividing people with your speech when some people talk they divide people they divide ethnicities they divide religious people when they talk they break other people's relationship that means they don't know what to talk right they just simply talk i know there are some people who have told me bante i cannot stop what i talk i keep talking it's a problem make some uh, limits to your talk speech you if you keep talking at a certain point you are not talking the truth you are talking all the untrue stuff so when we talk we have to know what to talk the contents and then at the same time what will happen to me and to others when i talk like this but most people they don't think that they just talk right some people might oh now it's like 920 yeah let's talk something until 10 na we just talk so the buddha said every time think the consequences of what you do action mind and thought then you will become a better human better person but if you don't think you do just what you think then you are not you then something else will take you over so the second thing that you could do with the speech is what you call using words carefully to unite people to make people peaceful to keep relationships secure strong not to divide sometimes you say something like a small word a relationship is almost going to be broken small tiny word because you don't think about it sometimes you say a single word that many people are going to fight over that thing very careful words are very dangerous like a knife buddha says if somebody is talking such words they are having a knife that knife is more dangerous than a physical knife that knife we can locate ah there is a the knife so let's take it away but that knife knife of the mouth you cannot stop with the phone internet 
wherever that person goes with the angels. Buddha says always think what you are going to talk. That is good. Third is not talking hurtful words. Of course, we are supposed to talk pleasant words, happy words to make people happy. Right? That should be our habit, should be a habit. When some people talk, they are going to hurt other people in whatever the way. When someone is talking too much about them, they are going to talk bad too much about other people. When you are lifting yourself too much, you are putting other people so down. So, we should have a limit to self praise. I did this, I know all that, I am the one who is behind all this. When you do that, on the other hand, you are putting everybody down. You are the only person. Buddha says, this is, these are two uh, armies of the Mara. Um, uh, Mara has ten armies. Attukkansana paravamba, self-praise and uh, humiliating other people down. You should never do that. Yes, please. Yeah. Or the opposite side, no, to put it. Mm-hmm. Well, when we talk about the politicians, they have uh, issues because the speaking is the only way that they engage with the people. Uh, so sometimes. Politicians, some politicians are not talking what they really want, they are talking about the party politics, party's idea. So, it is a different, different, we are getting to a different area. But I think if you look at who could be the group of people who are mostly misusing the speech, they could be such people, because untrue, unpleasant stuff. Okay, so the third one is hurtful speech. Fourth is frivolous speech. Gossiping, gossiping is a problem. You can, I know that you would like to gossip chit chat, right? What happened to that person's family, this family, that family, that person, where did they go? But always make sure that what you are doing is gossip. Make sure that you know that you are gossiping. Most people, they don't know they are gossiping. When you, when you gossip, if it is something that you know to a limit, always know, now I gossip, I should have a limit to that much better than at that point. So, these are the four good things you could do, always trying to be honest, speaking the truth, except those circumstances. We want to save life of everybody. We do not want to offend anybody, except those things. And always trying to unite people, keep people together, uh, protect everyone's relationships, friendships. Third is speaking pleasant words, happy words charming words because everybody likes those words. When someone is talking such words, others are liking to be around that person. Right? And even animals like huh? animals also do not go to people who talk bad words to them. They can feel as you as somebody said here. And then finally, uh, uh, you know refrain from gossiping. Right? That also makes you a very good person in speech. Now, let us go to the physical part, not killing, not stealing and not uh, misbehaving in sensuality, mostly sexual misconduct. Right? So, these are the solid versions of them. The previous ones are speech and the mind. That means, you are always trying to save everyone. You are always trying not to take anything that is not given to you. When you work in office, you are not even carrying anything for free. You are not misusing government stuff. You are not misusing anybody's stuff because they were not given to you. right? But what will happen to many? You are on the road. Now, a paper bill dropped from somebody. A lot of people ask, if I did not take it, somebody else will take it. That paper bill, that money. Right? If you find that one, 
give it to the lost and found box for somebody. Others things are others things. Never ever take other stuff. So, adinadana. No adinadana. Kamasamicha chara is a bigger precept. I would say kusala. You are not trying to break other people's relationship. So, practicing these 10 kusala activities will make you uh, a very well prepared person when you die and then you will become a human for sure. That is what we learn in the Buddhist text. So, now you are enjoying the wonder. I do not know you might have different views about your humanity because everyone is different. It is better not to complain rather than to feel happy about what you have already because you may have sicknesses, you may have unpleasant experiences, you may have feelings, I could not achieve that much, I achieved but not that much. But always look at what you achieved, what you got, your happiness, always value about it. Then you will see my human life is of course indeed a wonder to me. right? And always help other people who are going through a bad time in their life, uh, health wise, mentally, emotionally. All right, any questions? Yes, you have a mic, you can pass the mic so it can record faster. Yes. I am in the welfare section over the last more than 10 years. So, I have to visit people who are very dependent. They say the association needs to help them and give them return, save money and whatnot. But sometimes when you visit such people, you know that they are fine. But when you don't give them, other people say you are not compassionate. How do you deal with this type of situation? There are situations where upon further checking, you know they are blind. That's why I stand on my ground that I don't see. And there are also people who have blind for me, but they tell me another person who is the poor not to write the real things. So, tell them not to do that, mm. not for first So, yeah. there are those issues faced by over the years that put me in a very, very difficult position. Yeah. This kind of situation. Great. So, in, in, every, in every place, even in very developed countries, even in uh, Canada or Japan, uh, the difference is by degree, right? So that, so if you ask me from the point of Buddhism, what they are doing is lying, osavada, and also they are taking what, what should not be given to them, because this welfare money comes from people's tax, your money, our money, and they are bracketed by the government for the welfare. And then some other people, according to what you say, they are not that poor, but may, maybe they provide misinformation and maybe at the end they misuse our kindness. So I, what I can say is that this is a normal situation, but morally, according to what we said, this is cheating, so they are making akusalas. Such 
there are people who say that, why are you scared of dying? Be compassionate. So how do you deal with this guy? And the role of the government officials and and the people like you who are doing in between, right? So I think uh, uh, tax money should not be spent to those who are not really in need of. That is one thing. So I think the system, welfare system, has to be uh, revisited. That is one thing. But for you as a person, how you look at it is that uh, you don't want to sound immoral. You don't want to sound that you do akusalas. So. According to the situation, you should come up with a plan on how to respond to these situations. Uh, you should you should make sure that you are not immoral. You are not creating akusalas within the system. So I can't say this and that because it's going to be giving an advice to somebody in the government or in the office. What I can say is that you should be able to come up with an idea on how to respond to this kind of a situation on a personal level because you can't, uh, uh, you can't fix everybody. Even your colleagues you can't, you can't uh, fix them because they may have different thoughts too, even the people. Yes, yes, not in our, our control. Yes, interconnected. Yes. 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 So it's an endless problem. Endless problem. At the same time, uh, uh, the subject of taxing is like this, anyways, anywhere. So you will have to make some uh, unpleasant decisions. You will make to have some what you call difficult choices, decisions too. So I, what I suggest is that please think about what you could do personally and what you could do as a group of people there. And there may be some limits, parameters, boundaries. So looking at the both side, you can think about a better solution. Yeah. But never ever make an akusala because akusalas happen primarily from your mind. Any questions? Yes, please. Get, take the mic. Yes. Oh, I think my voice is very loud. That's good. I think I'd rather talk without the mic on very softly. So, example, uh, like if we know that someone is not doing well, not doing the correct thing, mm -hmm. and then we try to stop it so that they do not continue doing the bad thing, is it bad for us? Example, like we, we know that we always save them and then they are, they, they are able to have it, but or they are giving it to other people. So, knowing that it is not good to give them, stop giving them. So, is it good? The Buddha said, the Buddha said in one something to someone, you should, if that giving is not giving you happiness, in particular, because some people are even concerned about it, right? Because you think that whatever you give is passed down to somebody else by that person. You know that. No, I mean like the welfare thing is not our own thing. Yes. It belongs to the government. Some, uh, the people, mm -hmm. and then we are in charge, and then we are supposed to give them, and we feel that they should not be getting it, so we stop giving them. So is it good for us? Well. Yeah, so I think you have, uh, I would say, working obligations at that point. Let's say you are the person who has to release, uh, you know, kind of stuff. Let's say, let's assume so. So then if you know that uh, some people are misusing and uh, maybe you can make a decision. If you are able to make a decision, you can definitely go for that thing. Why you are, why you are wasting people's uh, tax money, that is a problem. But if you cannot do, if it involves many people's approval, then you may not be able to do much. You you have no choice at that point, R right? If the person making the decision, is it good for the person? They are doing, they are making a good decision or not a good decision? 
well let us uh, talk about a group decision now you are just one person because we know that they are not doing uh, the correct way yeah. so by not giving them we do not encourage them to do more yeah you could you could do that but there is a flip side you may be kind of isolated in that group of decisions and you know there are practical issues that is why when some people are so much conscious about their moral life they are not going to this kind of job <laughs> they think I have to make very difficult decisions I just walk away I, I find another this is not my career yes Buddha said you should look for a wholesome job he said samajiva because if you are making decisions like this if you are very uncomfortable let us say you may do it and there are problems you may not do it there are problems you are unhappy you have so much uh, hatred because about you why did I do this why I am doing this so better think about a career change that is one thing number one very peaceful thing is a career change second if you do not have a choice if you are somebody who is on that job for many years then you have to think about what could be the best thing to do uh, uh, to that kind of situation by taking care of you by taking care of others by also doing something for the people who are getting that benefits yes so there are two ways to think about it yeah, because, because if you remember that ignorance is based by to me I think that nowadays ignorance is no longer based mm-hmm. and that to be cruel to be kind so uh, all these type of things is still like sometimes we are cruel and then to be kind but it's like you are so cruel so is it still valid no we no we should we should ignorance is a bliss <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. In Buddhism, we don't have a radical compassion. We don't have radical qualities. Even the good things should not be done radically. It's like that you bring in dana to the monk. Hey, eat this. <laughs> you are not doing that. You are doing with respect. Now, let's say, as that is why I told you, I think if you are so much concerned about your career and what will happen during that work, then better to think, if you are a newcomer, if you are a newbie to the work, definitely you should have thought about this is this kind of a subject, this is this kind of an area where I have to struggle with my decisions. I think these decisions might not be working morally, like especially if you take the customs, if you take the security stuff. As a Buddhist, you have to think twice, should I really go or not? If you want to go, go it, but you have to understand there are things I can manage personally, but there are things as I said, I cannot manage. Uh, as a collective group I have to say yes but if you think a lot of bad thoughts come into you I am doing something not good then I think you should have thought about it before right because that is how we look at it so I do not say that we should be mean rude cruel to anybody even for the good thing right because uh, the Buddha said that uh, we should be kind to everybody all the time Right? It's like that we saying, I slap you, but I love you, don't worry. <laughs> that is a uh, you know, way of expressing my love, I slap you, don't worry. <laughs> I think my voice is so good. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, back in the from uh, my Satan, he as a group go there,
later, like you say, what is the word? Necessity becomes the mother of necessity. So, finally, in the book, they ended up in working and earning substantial money. Because, as far as I'm concerned, my view is sort of trivial why they are should help the parents for the necessity that they need to have. See, my view is that. And actually, it happened. The conditions um, force them to work for such a very combined income is getting four thousand two dollars. So I feel that I am making the right decision. Yeah. And then later, uh, when they they secure somebody, they were trained. When they did, they found that uh, the person who wanted the day that now is has put on weight and he's obese. Yeah. So. That kind of consideration, but people may think that you know, they are poor, they are not mm -hmm. yeah. We have to find the least, least unkind ways to approach, least unkind ways. Uh, maybe our approach might sound a little bit like that, but we have to try as much as possible to find the least unkind ways to respond. I think he raised his hand, yes. And we'll take another one, two question and then finish because of the time, yeah. I'm thinking about using the mic. Um, I don't know how to pose this question to you, but there's something to do about religions. Now, when you talk about religion, you find concept of a system. Mm -hmm. A religion is a system, a belief system. So, you talk about God creators, God creators, systems, Are you are you concerned about what will happen to them? Yes. If okay, if they if okay, okay. Now we are trying to not happening the way that they expected. Okay. Well, for us, we are not trying to look at other religious traditions, but what we can say is that we believe every human being is supposed to be reborn as much as possible till they attain nirvana. So definitely, now they might think that this would be their last life, but it is not in reality because we have lots of uh, information about the sansara. So they are, okay, now if somebody is guaranteeing that they will be only reborn once and uh, that person will take care of them, but in reality for us, they are going to be reborn as many times as possible because they haven't attained Nippan. So they will continue in the sansar. This is what we believe. Yeah, they are continuing just like us, unless we attain nibbana. But the problem is they they view it differently. They view it differently. They understand it differently. But we understand from a whole 
entire different way. Make sense? According to them, I think this is an interreligious question. <laughs> what I can say is that although they do not believe next life, but it does not stop them from being reborn. That is the other side of this question. They might say they are not uh, reborn according to what they believe. Just because let us say somebody says I am not believing in rebirth, but according to Buddhism that person is still going to be reborn. You cannot stop it. No one? The one who are today doesn't come back from the globe today, it's not seen as people, it's not seen as people, it's not seen as healthy, or even the creators, the, 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 the system of creators, the globe, actually, and it is believers. What I'm trying to say is, all in the end, what comes out of the earth, after we pass, after we come, after the night, after, after, after life, nothing comes back to the earth. Can you make it a little short? You are, you are talking a lot of stuff. Angles. Yes, please, please. Uh, I think correct me if I'm wrong, brother. Is that now the creator belief is gaining the numbers? Yes, more numbers. Of the belief system that uh, what you did wrong, it doesn't matter. Once you believe in me, or why not? That's why it's gaining the numbers. Yes. But as Buddhists, uh, because of our faith in the, the Buddha, the Dharma teachings. We know that it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. But the people who are easily if we think along that line, when these people pass on, that they didn't really go to heaven, mm -hmm. isn't it that they all these souls is actually they are more wondering all these things around? Ah, okay. Is it, is it uh, along that line? Uh, yes, it's yeah, yeah. But finally, what I'm saying is, no one after those who pass away doesn't come back to tell us what happened after that. Yeah, because after that, but no one is going to prove that this belief is wrong or whoever who is right or wrong. Yes. I mean, no one nobody, to nobody will yeah. tell that because once you pass away, you have no memories about the past life. Yeah. Can I say this question is more on a faith question? It's a confidence yeah. question to the. I think I think you are emphasizing what they believe more than what we think. You are emphasizing what they believe what they believe about what will happen. They never come back and say that uh, this work or not. In Buddhism, we know when we die, our memories are almost gone. Even we don't know what we did in last life to become a human, right? So there is there's no comeback like anybody can say even from their belief, other religions that we believe like that, but this happened to us. There's no comeback like that. Uh, so it's, it's, it's based on uh, actually uh, what you call uh, inter-life kind of a thing. So we do, in Buddhism, we do not, let us say there are other people who did not believe, but they still continue to be reborn in Buddhism, right? But according to you, 
things didn't work for them but they did not prove they cannot prove that we believed so and we are like this i feel while they are respecting the god they are also doing good things good karmas in their own way so those karmas are helping them to become good humans but that uh, that view might not reflect them again in the next life maybe they again they do the same thing maybe differently mm -hmm. all right <laughs> okay so let's wrap this up here now all right you want to do a uh, tank later okay may all the good karmas which we've been uh, accumulating today be transferred to all the departed people who passed away in the name of all of us if the departed people were born in a place of uh, discomfort pain may they be able to be reborn in better places if they are in better places happy places may they be able to improve that life and finally attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 idam me nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatayo idam me nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatayo idam me nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatayo me devana ga maitika also bless us Uh, protect us for good health quality of life and prosperity may divanaga mahidika also be well and happy and finally attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 finally may all the good karmas that we been accumulating so far be helpful and supportive for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 now i am going to bless all of you please receive the blessings abhivadana silis nichang vadha pacha inu chataru dhamma vadhanti ayuvannu sukham balam ayuraru ke sampatti sagg sampatti me vacha atu nibbana sampatti iminati samijjatu sadhu 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 and i wanted to thank everybody especially for president here brother chwa and all the other members and volunteers for inviting me to give this talk at your precious center in perak thank you everybody and i wish you a good night